Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. This is Sports Nine News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a quick video breaking down and analyzing the Colorado Avalanche railing and murdering the Nashville Predators out of the postseason. The only game that you were really able to see a good push from the Colorado Avalanche, um, or from the Nashville Predators, excuse me, was because of their goaltender, Connor Ingram, stepping up big in Game 2. Riddick, uh, after having a good start to his career with the Flames, hasn't ever been able to find the same since, ever since Mike Smith took over for him in that playoff series. So he's not the same. He's now a third-stringer AHL, but Ingram stepped up and was able to do good in Game 2, which is Nashville couldn't prevail and get enough goals for their netminder, Connor Ingram. So for me, this was just exactly how you would expect the series to be played. Um, the Colorado Avalanche, minus in Game 2, were able to just smoke the Nashville Predators in this series. And that's kind of what you expected going in. Obviously in Game 3, after the Game 2, in Game 3, Pavel Francois, because of the swollen eye um, to Darcy Kemper, also had to come in. And he's obviously the much a good goaltender, very solid when healthy two seasons ago, and then came back this year. And being healthy has been good again and earned him the extension as they work Eustace and Noonan and other guys into the fold for the future backup of the uh, Avalanche. But when it comes to Kemper, he was sharp early in the series and won them that goaltender battle and was fine in this game. It was just interesting how the Predators didn't really change their game plan enough in that game three where they were kind of still shooting like they were shooting on Darcy Kemper yet Pavel Francois is six feet tall and isn't nearly similar to how Darcy Kemper plays in that to himself uh so it was interesting there how their game planning didn't change but obviously Valerie Nachuskin, Radnan and McKinnon and Landis Cog Cogri and Cadre, excuse me and Lekkinen as well as Burakovsky and Comfer have been great this far. Kubel's been winning some puck battles for that line as well, which is really all you need him to do when you have JT Comper and Andre Burakovsky on the line with him. And Cal McCarr's been an absolute stud in the postseason. Him and Devin Taze have continued to be one of the best lines in the league. Uh, Josh Manson and Samuel Gerrard has looked fine. And then Eric Johnson and Bo Byram. Ever since Byram's come in, has really rejuvenated. Johnson, I thought, has had a very good just fill out his role third line season this year. But uh, with since Byram's come in, he's even ignited more than that, and those two seem to have been making a perfect pairing, the veteran Eric Johnson and the youngster 20-year-old Bowen Byram. So this series started off uh, with the Game 1 victory uh, by the Colorado Avalanche, where they just smoked them 7-2. to Riddich did not have a good start. In this game, Ingram came in and settled the waters a little bit, which set the tide for Game 2 when he was able to be fantastic and only let in two shots on 50, or two goals, excuse me, on 51 shots. As Ingram got them to that OT, they just couldn't get that second goal, and that was honestly inexcusable if you're looking at it from Nashville's side, in my opinion, when your goalie's able to be that sharp for you and you just can't get over the hump for him, that's not acceptable. But that was the game they could have stole to avoid the series sweep. They did not. They got smoked then in the next game. And uh, Pavel Francois defended the net very well when he was in in that game. And then in the final game of the series, where they close it out, Pavel Francois was the one mending the twine as Darcy Kemper was still recovering from the swollen eye as Pavel Francois mended the twine well and only let in three goals, of which three were just pretty good plays to Jakob Trent and Philippe Forsberg, the now unrestricted uh, free agent. It'll be interesting to see what they do with him. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with Forsberg going fall, but he and Trennan, um got their two goals in the final game of the series. This was an overall very good series, I thought, minus the fact that they would just snake bit and buy a great goaltender in Game 2, and you can't do anything about that if you're Colorado. You just have a goalie playing like a brick wall. So I thought this was a perfect series for the Avalanche. Now they get a good rest, and they're going to get to come into the second round really rest up and really having that energizer bunny energy that this team plays with that they just don't let up really going. Where even in that second game, they never let up. It's just Connor Ingram propelled the Predators, which should have been able to, if they could just get that damn thing goal, winning game two, and that's the only game I'm kind of walked away with the series, disappointed in a team in, just because if your goalie plays that well, and I don't usually talk this bluntly about being disappointed in a team, but in that instance I was, just because your goaltender really saved your butts, and you just couldn't get the second goal for it. But anyway, the Colorado Avalanche, as expected, 
beat the Nashville Predators in a series. I didn't expect them to do it in a sweep. I believe I took the Avalanche in five, saying that I thought the Predators would get one game. But I did pick the series correctly, picking the Colorado Avalanche, that everybody, I think, picked this series correctly. They honestly probably should have got a game, but they failed Connor Ingram in game two. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please continue to subscribe down below. Above in the easy to use widgets to keep the channel going to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June.